This video is brought to you in part by True Tech Tools. Quality tools, essential support. All right, guys, so we're going to do something here a little different today. Today we're working on a air dryer. So you've got a air compressor there, and this is the dryer. What it does is it uses the refrigerant cycle to dry the air. Obviously, you're going to run a cold plate. It's going to make it condensate. It's going to pull the uh, moisture out of the air. Haven't done a lot with this particular brand, so I need to figure out what's going on with it. I've already got it opened up. Compressor's hot, so it's been running. It had a lockout code here on the front. Went through it. It's off right now, far as that. I had an LO1 LCP and LP LO4. So I'm not real sure what that means. I got to do a little search here to find out. Essentially, it looks like we've got a compressor here with a condenser, which is pretty obvious. Come on the back here and you look at it. You can see there is a dryer. Comes to what looks like a capillary distribution tube of some sort. Comes over, goes into this plate heat exchanger. You can tell that this obviously is the air coming in and out. So it's coming into there and going out of it. Uh, you can see on the front side there, there is uh, air coming in. So what it does, it comes into this chamber and eventually comes out of it. It's in parallel, as you can see right there. And then you got other kind of desiccants here or separators and you got auto, hit the test button, it'll blow out the bottom. What that does, it automatically gets the moisture out of the uh, chamber there. The most important thing here is just understanding your basics, how the refrigeration system works. We're just going to be looking for most likely cause because you can see there's a lot of crap here. Chances are it's probably leaking. Uh, it's a really bad environment. I looked at the front on the on the condenser coil here. I got the filters off, but just filters are a joke. You're lucky if they keep the squirrels and the uh, birds out. But I can see through the back of it thanks to the door being open. Uh, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to see if I can look up those codes. If I can't, either way, I make sure I just go ahead and hit reset, and we'll check the pressures. We got a discharge port here on the front. And they had tape wrapped around the threads. So right there's that. Generally, I don't like these screw-on type caps for on the discharge, because usually they leak. Somebody over-tightened it, which usually makes it worse. Always leery. Yeah, I'm getting, there's leakage on that. Either that Schrader core is missing, or the uh, uh, valve core is bad. Either way, that's going to leak. That type of cap will not seal. This is the first time I've been here. We don't usually do a lot of work here. So we need to find out where the nameplate is so I can find out how much refrigerant this thing holds, which looking at it earlier, it was 407C, 293 ounces. 293 divided by 16. Oh, it's just 18 pounds. That's great. Let's go ahead and scan it for leaks. This is a filthy place. Everything here is just filth. Pure filth. What we've got is rail cars that are getting repainted. You can see that's a big old paint booth over there. So they must blast them out here somewhere. They pretty much go all the way out there. They blast the graffiti stuff off and then uh, end up painting. And you need dry air for paint. The joys of HVAC pretty much can work on anything. Just got to figure out how it works sequence of operation it's what it all boils down to if you know how how it's supposed to work you can find out where it's not working at and work your way from there and you can see a lot of moisture or oil or it could be just condensation don't know when it's this nasty dusty in here it's really hard to tell watch this not good ain't doing it over here on this one down there so chances are it's mainly in that big expensive container part you can see that looks like there is some oil over in this area here so it's probably leaking up high and the oil could be dripping down low okay we just cut a little hole in there that looks like stainless steel if it was leaking down here at the bottom it'd surely be going nuts All right, 
right, so this is made in Italy, which no offense Italy, I don't like your stuff usually. Usually we have a heck of a time getting parts and everything else. Yeah, 58 PSI, that's about 25, 30 degrees. That seems a little low. Okay, there's both of those. Both bled out, that way if we need to add or dump the refrigerant back into itself, we'll be fine. Won't get air in the system. Not condensables, all the other crap that seems to be happening a lot anymore. It's got an alarm. See the button there? It says a little bell. So reset looks like both of these. Hold it. See if it resets. The bell went away. Okay. Turn it on. Maybe hold it for a second. There we hold it for a second. 59 degrees. Something just kicked on. We've got the fancy contactors. You can't see crap. So here is pressures and temperatures so we're running 19 pounds suction 50 degree condensing temperature we are low it's pretty obvious well before we just go pumping refrigerant in it we need to talk to these people find out is this an ongoing issue what's the story Camille all right so I spoke with them found out they supposedly haven't had that many problems but so they don't really know when I got here that electrical panel there on the compressor was completely off it's partially broke just dumped what i had left of this um, nitrogen bottle in there and now i'm getting this one in there we're gonna pump it up see if we can find this leak there's got to be one it's kind of it's pretty important from what he's saying the other cover here on the side taken off so you can see moisture whatever i tightened up those fittings on that line see what happens is it condensates in the bottom and it blows it out there to the outside wall it's a horrible location for this because they're literally sandblasting these rail cars out here and all that dust gets in here and gets into these that that's a high dollar air compressor right there and it's getting all that dust and blow off all right into its fins just not a good idea so we're pumping her up to the maximum that we're allowed to which uh, low pressure side 303 high pressure 435 so we can go up to 300 which I think is about where we're at yeah we're at 300 right now let's go ahead and stop there we're testing very quickly over top of this I'm not dragging it because if I do look at that can you see that that's dust if it's a big enough leak that it took it out this quickly if that's exactly what actually took it out that uh, a pretty decent sized leak like i said originally we had picked some uh, leaks up here at the top no good reason for it to be because honestly that container there is completely sealed from what i'm seeing i've seen it leak out out of the these all the time it makes sense for these to be leaking down here in the bottom because of the cap tubes rattling up against the base of the unit Lucky there, we're getting something, Bobby. It's gonna be in those damn capillary too. Oh, look, I see something, I see something wiggling. Right there on that gold looking piece, there you go. Yep, it must be this one right here. That's it. Now why in the world did they run that on this, like that? You know it's gonna vibrate. Oh my gosh, look at that. There it goes. I wiggled it, so now it's leaking like a, a beehive. Yeah, we're leaking oil like crazy now. So we know it's right there. We're gonna go ahead and get that pressure off of it so we don't lose a bunch of oil, more oil than what we already lost. Is there anywhere else? Do we really wanna catch any other ones that are down here leaking? Yeah, the reason why I ain't using my detector, I mean, that's, that's just blowing crap loads of it right there. If there is a small leak, you're not going to pick it up by turning the sensitivity down. Just kind of common sense here. Uh, system never got completely empty. I'm going to pull the pressure off. I'm going to use a small piece of quarter inch probably, sleeve it after cleaning it up, and then I'm going to braze on both sides of it and then put her back together. This is why I like wearing knee pads. That way when you're down to this nasty crap, it kind of keeps some of the stuff off your uniform. Let's get this wire tie stuff cut loose 
so maybe I can rearrange these. Oh, there's another leak there. Look at that. There's another one right there. See it? Right there, another one leaking. So we got two leaks. Fantastic. That's shooting oil all the way over here. It's like that's why you don't wrap this crap on the bottom like this. These idiots should have sleeved it. This is brain dead common sense, man. You guys freaking engineers. Yeah, let's take these lightweight little capillary tubes and let's put them down on the bottom where it vibrates, where crap's gonna fall down onto it. Brilliant. We're down to almost no pressure and this thing's still blasting things out. That's what's crazy. So somebody broke the Schrader off. Look at that. Broke that baby right off. And instead of removing it, they just left it in there and put another cap over it. But instead, no, nope, let's not pull it out. Let's just leave it go. It took some wiggling and stuff like that and it screwed my tip up a little bit. But I think we finally got it out of there. I was able to pick it right up out. Crazy. Okay. So what I've seen done before, and it usually I wouldn't be a big fan of it, but something like this, I mean, there's just not a lot. Man, there's some spots there kind of rubbed a little bit too. Man, what a mess. What a mess. So this one here that we know is damaged completely. We're gonna go ahead and completely clean that off. We're gonna go ahead and get our sandpaper here. Clean that up. And then we're going to cut it with a pipe cutter. And then we're going to couple it together with a piece of quarter inch I think will fit on the outside of it. Making the best of what we got here, man. That's about what we got. And then we're going to deburr it. Not easily going to fit a deburring tool inside there, so like it or not, that's about as good as you're going to get it. Let's see if we can get this level. That way, that oil hopefully will fall down and away from where we're going to be brazing at. Any vapor will possibly push it up there. I mean, heck, the heat can pull it up to it, too. There we go. No, I'm not going to run nitrogen through there. Not happening. There's too much oil and everything else in there. One little solder joint, it's not gonna be an issue. I use Paracord 550 for my ratchet there. I think we got it. Things it's a little difficult, but you gotta just try it and see what you get. That one's repaired. Let it cool for a sec. We'll go ahead and chop into this one right here. I'm trying to sand it all up before I cut into it. Like I said, that way it, the area is all clean. I probably could almost skim coat it, but it kind of scares me. It probably collapse on itself. So we're gonna go ahead and cut it out. Okay, getting that cleaned up. Got oil dripping down, that's gonna be a real treat. If it wasn't open, you wouldn't be getting oil through there and there's no reason for it not to be open. You may try for giggles to go ahead and blow through this. Just see if we can blow some of it out. I don't know how it's gonna act. Let's see what happens. Yep, there it is. So we got the oil out of that one. Go ahead and do a little bit through that high side now. There goes the high side, it's getting blown out. There we go. Notice I'm keeping my gate, my hoses out of the dirt. Common sense to some, but you'd be surprised how many people let their gauges fall down in the dirt. Not good. All right, so it appears that that did not record. I thought it was recording. We're just checking our other lines to make sure there's no other ones here that we aren't missing. And you got this Lone Ranger over here all by himself and all the other ones went underneath there. 
Let's see if we can just do a light coating here on this. see how that does we'll, we'll kind of let it cool down and then uh, make sure whether it's going to bend or break we'll do a pressure test on it just let her set for a little bit i believe we've got them all let's go ahead and pump it up and see what we get go ahead and just wrap it around your finger and that way it's encompassed that way if it's leaking on the back side that's how i do it to try to catch any leaks that are um, hard to get blown off by putting it in there and making a little bath that helps keep it from doing that so far so good go ahead and let that continue to add up you may stop it at a lower pressure and see if it holds at that pressure and then we'll take it higher after that that way we can salvage what what nitrogen we have left because we don't have any more without going and getting it and i really don't want to do that if i don't need to let's see how this cap is make sure that's we don't have a, a newly overlooked leak Appears that it's fine. We lost 0.2 so far. Make sure my gauges aren't leaking over there. Put new seals in them. Ain't nothing worse than thinking you got a leak and your stinking gauges are leaking. So sometimes that does happen. Now the problem with doing it with two hoses is you've just enabled an extra leak point. All right, we lost right at one pound over 15 minutes. Um, that seems to always be the case no matter what it is I check. Um, compensated or not, I mean, that just seems to be what I always get. This is probably one of the best examples where the NAVAC pump here, wireless, truly comes in handy because I don't know where the nearest plug is. And I... Uh, just need to get her done without running cords all over. Not to mention your cords be nastier and crap by running on that floor. So I'll grab my bucket with all my goodies and get started. Now I restarted that. We're at five minutes and we're at point two. So point two, four, six. And I just went back down to point one. So at 15 minutes compared to the 16 minutes, that would be two, four, six. It's already slowing down. I'm not too horribly concerned with that uh, with it being a capillary tube system uh, we're going to really need to do both hoses if it was a TXV we could get away with one but not really a good idea with uh, capillary tube so I just pulled out the Schrader core off the suction side you can see the Schrader core it did not want to go in there very well but you can see it looks like it might be a high flow style it's a square on the end, kind of goofy looking, not something I'm used to seeing here. Like I said, it's built in Italy, so they probably do things different over there. But we end up using the valve core depressor on the high side there. Even that new one I just put in there already won't come out. It's I'm not fooling with it. So I'm just pressing it down, using the valve core tool behind it. Best vacuum gauge you can get, bar none. Blue Vac Pro, love it. On the... Uh, Clamps, definitely worth the extra money to get the stainless steels. Those uh, make it so much simpler to get things hooked up in tight spots. Definitely worth it there on that. And you guys, always guys, you can get this stuff at True Tech Tools. Save 8% with promo code SURVIVAL. I'm going to cheat and just put it right here on the other side of this. I am not able to read it when it's on the other, down there in the back where I'd rather have it at, which is on the suction side. Uh, just because I know it's the bigger area but either way we're going to watch this for a bit and see what we get we're uh, pulling down here we got our gas ballast open while that's pulling vacuum I'm gonna go ahead and start working on some of these uh, capillary tubes see if we can figure out a way we're already at 2,000 something we'll isolate it I am not really anticipating hitting and holding below five not on this system we didn't replace the dryer. 
we got crap loads of oil with refrigerant in it that's boiling off. It's just an artificial number at this point. This never went into a negative. Uh, anytime you open a system, yeah, you're supposed to replace the dryer. Uh, that oil was blocking anything going into the system. Not overly worried about it. Judge it however you want. If it was running empty, sucking moisture in, sure. If you see where that's at right there, uh, there's so much oil in there. I've had it before, it'll flare up on you. You're gonna turn this in to an extra two, three hours by the time you get done dealing with all the other crap that's gonna go along with it, and it's just not worth it. Just not worth it. If it hasn't had any problems before, it hasn't been opened, then it shouldn't be an issue. Uh, it does have high, low pressure switches. It does have temperature uh, switch on the discharge. So as far as all the safeties and stuff is concerned, this thing should be protecting itself fairly decent to the point where it shouldn't have ran itself to death. Okay, I've got some of this bigger split tubing here, regular tubing, I'm gonna split it. And it's bigger diameter, so it should fit around it pretty easily. Normally we got a little bit smaller, but this will make it a little quicker and easier for me to put it on there. Yeah, you just kinda use your knife, split just the one side, and then you're gonna wrap that tubing in between there. You've probably seen it on rooftop units, stuff like that. Some of the manufacturers do it. We've got two of them on, got them fed all the way up to here. I have to wrap some tape on it because all these curves and stuff, it's, it's really wanting to kink off of it. Um, normally I use this one size smaller than this, and like I said, I ain't sure where this even came from. I think somebody gave it to me at one of the ice cream stores, and I just said, sure, I'll take it. Um, this is a little bit bigger diameter and it just is not as, um, I don't know, it don't hold shape as well as what the other one does. So all I'm doing is putting a little bit of tape on it so that I can make it around this bend underneath this fitting and kind of just working my way back to it. Now that I have all of them individually done, I'm just going to do them in a bunch, in a, in a group, and that will keep them from vibrating into each other, but at least they'll have the plastic separating them. The biggest thing is not allowing them to vibrate into each other. Uh, them running a stinking airline in between there wasn't a real smart idea. There you go. It's all up, nothing's shaking, nothing's got a wiggle room, nothing's rubbing into anything sharp. Hoses fit back in there. That is such a mess. All this here, I'm just gonna wire tie it back together. Our vacuum is looking pretty good. We are 1100. Let's isolate, see where we're at, see if it jumps up. Comes up to about 1400. There's so much refrigerant in this thing. It's at 0 0.9, 0 0.8, it's slowing down. So yeah, 1400. I've seen this many times. I'm not sitting here all day to pull refrigerant out of a system. I wanted to make sure all air, moisture, and any previous crappy uh, repairs or charging procedures or whatever were all cleaned up. Don't agree? That's up to you. And that's my feelings, my thoughts. If it was left open, yeah, pull the oil out, put filter dryers on it, do the whole nine yards. This is the bull crap about it. I got three jugs at the back. So I got extra 410, 448, 507, 404, 22, 407C's back here, 407F. It's just ridiculous. Oh, that refrigerant we came up with? Oh, it's no good no more. Gotta get rid of it. Yeah, well, never mind the patents wore out. Nope, nope. We got global warming. Global global warming. Whoops. Global global climate change. Global change. Change. Climate climate change. Yeah, sure. Still holding good vacuum. It's at point zero zero and it's not moving and I've got everything valved off for a while now. So we're going to charge a little portion of it into the suction there. We can bring it up out of the vacuum and then we will start dumping the rest in through the uh, discharge. Yeah. So we made sure that it's broke out of vacuum. There we go. 
positive pressure on the high side. 293 ounces. We'll, we'll switch my gauge to ounces. We'll go ahead and write it inside here. Leak repair. All right, here goes the moment of truth. Let's go ahead and turn this thing on. Not that that does anything. Go ahead and hold that button for a second. There she goes. It should run whatever program it's got going on. And let's go ahead and get this thing sucked in. See where we're at. We're only at 165 right now, so we got another 100 plus ounces. We're at 293 on our refrigerant charge. Our superheat is 9.9, .9, 10 degree superheat so far. I just stopped adding a little bit ago. Discharge temperature so far is 123, and we're running a liquid temperature of 91. So everything looks right in line with the way it should look. And we can go ahead and do our subcooling here. Clamp over there to our liquid. Yeah, we're on the discharge line. Yeah, there's gonna be an itty bitty amount of drop across that condenser coil. Five pounds, maybe 10 no more, but more than likely you're lucky five. Too worried about it. It's cycling on and off and actually shutting down. It's at set point a couple times. Uh, so we're on a 46 degree superheat, 13.8 sub cooling. Uh, that's what the fan's not running currently. We do have an error code here, something about the drain. I got to figure out what the story is on that. There goes the fan again. It's kicking on. About 235, 240-ish, so about 100 degrees. That's not too uncommon from what I'd normally see. And that's uh, subcooling drops down there. All right, them drains are seem to be working. Okay, and let's squirt about six ounces in there to make up for what's on the ground. Might as well just do it right while we're here. We're gonna hook right onto the suction line and pump it right in. Liquid ounces versus fluid ounces is different. Weight ounces versus fluid ounces is different. And it's so close. I just use the weight ounces. So I just reweigh it and see how much I used. But I know each pump is right around an ounce. I think it was about an ounce what it was. So we should be good. Definitely better than not doing anything, which is generally what would have probably happened. All right, guys. So I called the factory, spoke with them. It sounds like this drain is basically a reminder for maintenance. I tried valving it off and flipping it sideways. There was supposed to be some clip or something to do. I don't see a clip. Um, he said it ain't gonna keep it from running. They're all blanking like that. Chances are, from what I see, the way everything else looks here, chances are it probably doesn't get maintenance turned off like they you know, would normally be. But they work, I can watch the water blow down. Everything's working good. It's turning on and off. It's holding 35 degrees. All right, if you guys enjoyed the video and you want to see more like it, make sure you give it a thumbs up. Check out some of the other videos. This is just one in a, one of the first ones I've actually done a video on. I've done a few in the past. I just don't do a lot of them. So this is the first brand here that I've done. The company that sells them is out of Georgia. So anyhow, um, check out some of the other videos. If you would, hit the thumbs button. Until next time, guys. Later.